42, Jamie McMurray. I'm Jamie McMurray, driver of the number 42 Texaco Haviland Dodge. I'm 27 years old, and I'm from Joplin, Missouri. I started racing when I was eight, and it's the only thing I've ever really known. I had people tell me from the time I was eight, don't ever change, Jamie, just be the person you are, and I think I've done a really good job of that. Driving number 19, Jeremy Mayfield. I'm Jeremy Mayfield, I'm 34 years old, from Owensboro, Kentucky. I drive the number 19 Dodge from Abraham Motorsports. I'm not one of the younger drivers, but I'm to the point in my career, I feel like uh, I'm at the prime of it. I feel like I'm in better shape than I've ever been. I feel like I'm a better driver than I've ever been. In car number eight, Dale Earnhardt Jr. I'm Dale Earnhardt Jr. I'm 29 years old. I'm from Mooresville, North Carolina. I drive the number eight Budweiser Chevrolet. My racing career, I always used to say, well, as long as I can just make a living. But we started placing the points and my goal is to win the next Tail Cup Championship. Martinsville's a racetrack that I don't enjoy racing. It's just a hard place to get around and race. Anything can happen. It's either gonna be a good day for you or it's gonna be a real bad one and there's not a lot in between. Martinsville's a place that you can get very upset at people and want to move them out of your way. Yeah, just tell myself, just be calm. Martinsville is one of my favorite tracks. It's the smallest track that we run. Very tight, a lot of beating and banging. But we've run great there. We've had four top fives in a row in the last four races, so uh, really confident going into this race. Buggity, buggity, buggity. Let's go racing, guys. Just really kind of blown away by her appearance. All right, thank you so much. We're still on for this week. We're still on for this week. All right. With my lifestyle, the only way that I can really date somebody is they're going to have to either fly where I am or I'll go where they are. So it was pretty cool that Courtney had come out and spent some time at work. Up here at the tire store, uh -huh. I applied for a job there. You know, went home and told Dad I was getting me a job there, and he like made me tell the guy I called up, tell him I didn't, I didn't want the job. Did he ever say why he didn't want to work there? Because he worked there. You don't want to do that. I'm like, dude, it needs money. There is a part in that book what? where I when I won in my rookie year in uh, Richmond, I had to so bad. <laughs> I was like, it's one of them deals like, you know how you're riding home, yeah. and you're like, oh, God, you know, you're a couple miles away, and you <laughs> can't hold it, and then I pulled into Victor Lane, and I'm like, mm. oh. so I'm like, have an escort? straight out of the car, past the cameras, past the cheering crew, everybody, right to, everybody's like, what the hell is happening? <laughs> I came back, they're all like, where have you been, where'd you, where'd you go? I'm like, man, that's, I'm sick, dude. <laughs> what is that? Well, it looks like something you made, so it's probably. <laughs> oh, you made acid in there. I can't tell what it is. No, I can't either. That might be the stuff that's grown over what you left. Oh in there. my God, look at it. 
Shane is lacking a little, little bit of experience as far as cooking. So she'll cook something that won't turn out like she likes it. If she eats it and she's OK, we'll not die. Huh. She don't think she's going to eat it. I'll eat it up, but I still don't think she's going to eat it. See, if Goldie don't eat it, don't, don't. Like, don't you try to eat it. I'm not going to eat it. I'll eat it up for her, though. You'll eat it up? She might like it better like that. What's the smell? That chicken? Some, I don't know. Look, Goldie. I warmed it up. You want to try it? See, she ate it. No, she didn't. <laughs> well, that's been a good time right there. Why? Uh, no, they're, like, a much, they're a little overkill. Yeah. My dad and I bought a, a brand new dirt bike. You see all these motorcycle racers, and they're always just in such good shape. I thought that would be something that would be fun to do, and at the same time get some good exercise out of it. This deal will be fun here. What? This dirt bike deal. You won't hurt to run a little of that race gas in there. I think that all fathers and sons have something that they do together. He raced drag cars, stock cars, a little bit of everything, and at one point my dad even quit racing altogether just to be able to do it with me. So I think that maybe he's living a little bit of his dream through me, and I'm willing to share that. Cool. Right. It's just started, don't you think? Yeah. Is the gas on? Yeah. It's got to be on. And I got flooded. Maybe. So my dad and I uh, sat there for, I don't know, 30 minutes or an hour trying to get it to start. Just wore ourselves out. Have no idea what was wrong with it. Oh, God dang. That scared the hell out of me. <laughs> Thought I got shocked. <laughs> well, my dad's high as strung, but as irritated as I can get with him, he's my biggest cheerleader. And at the end of the day, if I've absolutely screwed up and made an idiot of myself, he'll tell me what a good job I did. We took a boat trip to introduce Courtney to my family. I learned how to drive this thing, and you and I can come out and spend the weekend yeah. on the lake. Yeah. We've got beds. You know, when I get in a relationship, my sister Kelly is pretty protective of me. She's pretty outspoken of what her opinion of that person is. You know, a lot of times when Dale meets people, we may not meet them. When he's dating someone or he's interested in someone, I'm scoping them out. It's another way of Courtney knowing more about me, because all Courtney knows is what she sees in a magazine or on TV. What's up, Dan? How you doing? How's right, it going? How's it going? All right. Appreciate you. What are we doing? Time. All right. Can I set the end? Yes. All right. As a driver, if it was just about racing the car, that's the easiest part that we do. But there's so much more that, that goes along with it. Going to throw a bunch of different things at you. A lot of philosophical stuff and then just kind of the meaning of life issue. OK. First off, tell me about your most prized piece of racing memorabilia. I would say Charlotte Trophy. That's one thing I'd like to have forever. Are we alone in this universe? I don't think so, no. Why not? Because I swear I've seen an alien, so I swear I did when I was a kid. What scares you? Being rejected. Complete this. Success is? Feeling like you gave 100%. Love is? <laughs> what you make of it? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not into love right now, so I can't answer that. <laughs> Tell me about the last time you cried. Breaking up with my girlfriend. Um, you know, I dated Sailor for like two years, and 
definitely probably one of the hardest things I, I've went through in a long time. All right, that's it. Okay. Appreciate it. I didn't think it was too big a deal to introduce Courtney to my family. We had a lot of fun, though. All right, make sure we don't bang into the pier. Move, you got a rope at the front. Courtney is really, really down-to-earth nice girl. She definitely doesn't, you know, seem in awe of who Dell is. She's easy to talk to. Uh, I really like her. I'm not the kind of person that has to be in a relationship all the time. I'm really into my racing, and it's it's really going good. Do I need to make this part of my life? I, 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 I do. We run the ship back a little bit. Yeah, there was. End of the line, honey. Yeah. You like that, don't you? You like that? I like that. You like that? Oh my god, Morty. All right, you want to put? Never mind, you suck. Oh my god, what was that? I'd love to hang out with all my buddies and have a good time, but when I go home, I don't want to talk about racing. I want to talk about what they're doing or what they're, you know, their, their children or whatever's happening. Dude, where's your girlfriend then? Well, things just didn't work out. Oh, yeah, you know, oh, I'm sorry. Hell, I, th I thought everybody knew. Yeah. Yeah, we went out for like two years or whatever. It just we started fighting all the time, and this wasn't worth it, you know. Show me ring, show me ring. You get married? Oh Lord! Oh my gosh! You want to get married? Oh man! Yeah, I'm not there yet. Just just broke up with my girlfriend, and that's just very hard when you're gonna spend a life together with them, and then you realize that you're not going to. If I meet somebody, I'm gonna go out with them and have a good time. But the last thing I'm looking for is is another relationship. Like, I was, you are like my new driver. Really? Why is that? Well, because I just think you're so great. You're really? So great. really? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I love you. Oh, I love yeah, you. Really great. We are a wonderful personality. Really? Yes, yeah. we are the new dance car. Yeah. All right, we gotta check the mailbox first. You got a pass in it? Well, it's luxury. <laughs> sure do. The sport's so intense, so stressful, and you have to, you know, deal with it some some way or somehow or not. It'll take over. So I want to have fun, be myself, and, uh, and that's one way that helps me get through all the the times that you are uh, under pressure. Have you seen the layout of the track? No. Have you seen it? <laughs> World's fastest 16th mile race track right here. So much higher than this right there. Right, Jeremy has a lot of toys, but that's what makes him happy. He has fun. He, he's a kid at heart, and anything that's got a motor on it, he's gonna he's gonna enjoy it. Oh, oh man! Caution. <laughs> <laughs> Style and the sport that we got that is just so busy and so hectic all the time that you forget about your your friends and family. So I'm going to Kentucky to, to see my mom and my, my grandmother. My mom divorced when I was uh, like four or five years old and got a good relationship with both of them. Oh, you know. oh. <laughs> what are you doing? Know? Doing all right. Doing fine. Doing great. <laughs> Well, we got Slick stuck back here in the back. Can't you? Oh, here he is. He came out. <laughs> Thought she was stuck in the back. Nah, I bet. How are you doing? First thing my mom and I did was uh, go to my grandmother's house, went in and hugged my grandmother and told her I loved her. Yeah, yeah. I have. <laughs> I kind of spent a lot of time with her growing up and just love, you know? She's my grandmother and love to see her done good. <laughs> it's been a long time ago, and he would come over to the house, and they had. Um, they had some little race cars, too, that they made themselves. 
But I'm still proud of you. Every time I'm, well, thank you very much. And I'm proud of you. And every time I'm here, you always tell me stories I, I, I didn't even remember. So you, your yeah. memory's pretty good. And I wish I could leave it over. Oh, yeah, that'd be great. Yep. I really do. Well, Aww. I guess we're going to get rolling. I wish you I love you. Love you. Yeah. I love you. Shorts. That'd be them. I'll yeah. be them. Good call, Mama. I didn't know if they were long enough. But I guess by the time you hang them down, yes. they'll be long enough. How many colors are I felt pretty good about Courtney, you know. I felt pretty strong about her and how things were going, so uh, I had told her and my mama that I'd send them shopping. What? Carry it. Carry it in? Yeah. I oh beg you. <laughs> <laughs> I can carry them back <laughs> to where I got them. You ain't got nothing in the trunk? No, we didn't shop much, I'm telling you. It, we spent all day looking for you a pair of shorts. My mother's real uh, outgoing, fun to pick with. She's just a lot of fun to be around. You know who Andy Warhol is? Yeah, sure. That's his style, right? Uh-huh, yeah. Because like, I want this. I want a picture like made like this. OK. Well, Andy Warhol can't do it. No, but you can get it made. Uh, he did. <laughs> I definitely wanted Courtney and Mama to see what one thought of the other. She was winking at people left and right. Oh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Did they bring you champagne? Yeah. Yeah, they, they brought us home. Where is it? They opened it and served us. Oh, yeah. man. So you didn't get didn't to keep the I couldn't say. I mean, it was chilled and everything. Like, <laughs> thanks, bud. Stick it in my bag and come home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going home. I got to go home. My dog is. Kill me. Now I've locked her up all day long for you and Courtney. Uh, <laughs> okay, Bye. 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 Lee just brought this little one home uh, Saturday. Come. Cola. What's wrong with it? It's okay. Cola. That's pretty horse. Come on. That's my mom, she's the greatest. I mean, she she was so cool, you know, growing up that um, kind of like my best friend. Uh, she supported what I like doing. You know, I, I won the race and, and won the race more than anything. And, and she'd go without to make sure I had tires or a tire or whatever, you know, from a race car or whatever. And uh, just wouldn't be here without her. That's my little four-year-old, Jeremy, we took two years with. My mom and Shana both are just genuine people. I mean, what you see is what you get. I admire that a lot. Come, horsey. Come. Yeah, come up and see what this and now. Whoa, cool. That's a pretty, pretty one there. John She's very proud of her horses and something she enjoys. And she likes things that don't have a motor on it that she could uh, uh, ride. But I, I'd rather, you know, have something that had a motor on it. Hey, 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 hey. You're gonna, you're gonna <laughs> hey, dinner, I know, he had not think. <laughs> hey, Racy, get off a of Swede. Oh, God. <laughs> what the hell's going on there? shopping though, is it? Because I think I'm fruity. I'm gonna be a presenter at the CMT Awards, so um, I don't really have any clothes that, that would maybe be appropriate to wear there, so. Went to a store that typically I would never go to. I feel like one of the Elvises in Vegas right now. <laughs> <laughs> if you notice the, the texture in this, there's a floral texture inlay in. Uh, so you like the coat? Oh, I like the coat, yeah. I, I, when, when I saw it, I was like, okay, if he doesn't buy it, I will. Really? See, um, you understand that I'm buying this for a one-time deal. I'm never going to wear that. I mean, like, <laughs> like I mean, not... You say that to the ladies start talking. <laughs> That's how they always do. Yeah. That's how they right. always do. You know, it's not something I'd ever wear, I don't think. I, I'd get, I'm scared I'd get beat up if I wore something like that to my race shop. That's a great look. Oh, oh that is so awesome. <gasps> and what this is, is a little more relaxed, a little chill. Very fashion floor, but really cool. Not too out of the box. Hmm. It's a nice look. I don't want that thing on my wrist. <laughs> I mean, you can lose it. Yeah. I had people tell me from the time I was eight, don't ever change, you know, don't ever change, Jamie. Just be the person you are, and I think I've done a really good job of that. And everything's too, why do I get, why do I fit so weird? Yes. That's cool to get to go do an award show and meet all these famous country music singers, but to, uh, to, to dress for it <laughs> is just a little bit odd. I 
and Courtney wanted to go get some dinner. There was this restaurant in Mooresville my dad used to always go to. And it's called Little Kitchen. I hadn't been there in almost 10 years. I was thinking, man, it would be a good atmosphere for me and Courtney just to have some dinner and hang out. Courtney, I could tell, man, she was uh, a lot of fun, you know, and it's like having one of your best friends with you. You ever ate liver mush? What the hell is that? Everything they can't sell whole. Oh, yeah. Bring on the mushrooms, because that doesn't sound like a goat. Like, beak, beaks and what? <laughs> Only you can make me try them. Uh -uh. It's entertaining to be around her. It's really important to me that I can pick with her and she can pick back just as good, you know. I'm not worried about anything when I'm around her, so it's working out pretty good. Martinsville is a very tough place to qualify in that it's it's easy to overdrive the car. I like it because it, it gets excited, scared, and excited at the same time. And that's you the know, ultimate that rush. Really. Like when people always say, oh, it's exciting to get in a race car. Racing is exciting in a uh, a different way than what you get out of qual and qualifying. When you get done, you're yeah. You know I like racing. You know, I mean, like I like it when you can wear somebody out. You know what I mean? Like you get behind them and you can see they're just driving their ass off, and you're like, this is cool. You know. She's been waiting out there all day, don't you think so? What are you talking about? To her, she's been out there all day. She's gonna, she's gonna be purple with her she sunburn. Came to the, she's not waiting on me, she's just hanging out at the track. I think she's waiting on you, actually. No, she ain't. She's just chilling. She ain't here with nobody. Just likes racing. Just likes racing. I just think she's hardcore, so she, you know, she ought to be rewarded. You're at home with your friends all week, and Nobody's shouting your name, nobody's hollering for an autograph. There's just a huge change as far as the attention. Look, she was waiting on Tony the whole time. Though. She's got, that Sports Illustrated ain't got Tony on the cover. She took off like she's going with Tony. Let's go. It's two different lifestyles and a severe difference between one and the other. It wears you out a little bit. are here at this paperclip shaped Martinsville Speedway including Dale Earnhardt Jr. of the Bud Chevy. Let's get up to speed level pretty good by 2059. Martinsville it's very easy to make mistakes so I was really concentrating the first lap and then I bonsai the second lap. Junior's working on a string of six straight top ten starts here two of which were front row and two of which were second row. Here's what a lot better than anybody's out here right now. Junior moves up to fourth on his second lap. Hey, hot rod. My car's running great. Practice went well, the car's good. You know, I'm thinking already, man, it's gonna be a, a good weekend for us. Track's still feel about the same to you, Jeremy. It's about as best, I mean, about as good as it could be. Yeah, Jeremy, that was a hell of a second lap, really. Good job. I'm 
went back to the motorhome after qualifying and I talked to Shane about, you know, how the car ran and how well we qualified and that everything was looking good. And walked in and of course she's on the treadmill. Hey. Hey. What do you think? I'll be top 10 hopefully. Hell, I ain't never been third that long. I love staying in my motor coach. It's awesome because it's kind of like mine and Jeremy's little vacation home. Oh my god, that's like winning a race here, you know? Yeah, of course it'd be great. Top three, but yeah, Rusty be Rusty. He's pretty good. And Jamie McFly better. Or Jamie end up? I don't know. He might be. Get up a speed lap for Jamie, 2056. She's second quickest, and that's on his first lap at a 2030. He picks up a little over a half a tenth. He could be on the mark. He's pretty good right now. I was here. really loose the first corner, and that's pretty frustrating, but sometimes loose is fast. Ran a 309 and a 337. That's second right now. That's a good job, bud. And boy, I felt great. I was really loose, but felt good. He ended up qualifying second, and I was thrilled with that. chicken. See, I'm trying to cut it away from this stringy stuff. It's like the ligaments and stuff. Don't look at it, because then you're not going to want to eat it. I have this thing about, I don't like eating out anywhere that I'm not, not sure about the food. I always scared of food poisoning. Shane will cook something that we know is safe that not going to get me in trouble with on Sunday. You either have to have chicken helper, hamburger helper, or tuna helper. Now they have pork helper, too, pork chops. It doesn't have the word helper in it. I don't do it. If I'm going to cook, I have to have it laid out on a box, telling me what to do. I don't have that good cooking instinct. I'm not a very good cook. Jeremy tells me when I try that I am, so I appreciate that. But I know deep down I'm not. <laughs> oh, that's probably too much butter. I have your arteries clogged up before you go racing tomorrow. I feel like Shana's a good cook. I always seem to, to like it, whatever it is. Jeremy, you don't like when your food touches, do you? Oh, yeah, like a kid. Huh? It all goes down the same, too. We're exiting the uh, motorhome lot, and there's two motorhomes already leaving. And I tell Buster, man, just let's go. We go between them, go around them, do something, you know? I got driver's introductions here in a few minutes. Whoa! Buster, no, 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 no. Whoa! Golly! The guy starts backing into us. See, they're going to smash the golf cart, or we're going through the fence. Just go, just go, go! It's 1240. Can we have a ride? That's just brilliant, ain't it? Go with me. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. This is a badass little thing. Good luck. Thanks. That pissed me off. I never, I never get pissed off, and that just sent me to the other side of the moon.
slid in behind Jeff Gordon, which is, I'm sure, what he'd been thinking about long before this race ever started. You're clear for the moment. One back to the eighth, as you know. Taylor Hart Jr. trying to challenge for second place. I was running really hard on my car and was able to get by uh, Jamie after a couple laps, so I'm running second. The Earnhardt Jr. goes by Jamie McMurray in the 42. Look at the people in the stands, and that was passing for second place. Junior's fun to race with, because he's all about smashing some fenders and having a good time. They don't give a prize for best looking car when this is over with. No, sir. It's like there's something that went wrong or something here. Well, I have tried everything, and nothing's helping him. When something happens to your car in your right in the middle of the race, you feel like a wounded duck. You're just trying to hold on for everything you got. It's like it's blowing, you know what I mean? Like it's like a lot of movement in there. I just hate it because he's so much better than that. I kept watching Jeremy fall back and back, and I'm sitting there just like, fix it. And I hear the frustration in his voice, and it just, it again, rips my heart out because I can't do anything about it. This place, it, it'll, it'll make you pull your hair out. We're still about 30 minutes from pit stop. So it's back to 19 in the wall. It's on the field. You think it's nobody on? Yeah, brakes or something like that. Caution's out. Hey, to the garage. I don't know if that's too much brake or if he had a left rear tire down. Something caused that car to really snap. Well, this is the same car that Junior has run in every single Nextel Cup race he has ever competed in here at Martinsville. This is one of the oldest cars they have in the stable. Jeff Gordon comes in as the leader, a minor adjustment in the back end of the car. This will not be the best pit stop they've had all day. We had some great pit stops, so we came in fourth and came out first, so I'm leading the race. And what really makes that stop really good for Dale Earnhardt Jr., he had to go around Jeff Gordon to get out of his pit box. Green flag at Martinsville, Virginia, after the sixth caution of the day. Might as well go and put it in the garage there. That's a terrible feeling when you wreck a race car and you're pulling in the garage area and, and you know, the guys are starting to work on it, and you're like, don't know how bad it is. Guys, take it easy here. Let us get it up on stands. We have quite a bit of work to do here. Jeff Gordon has a problem with the right front of his DuPont Chevy. I think a piece of concrete came up and hit Jeff Gordon's car. There's a better look. Dude, right yep. there. Wow. The track has developed a cavity in the concrete that NASCAR is going to have to address before we continue this race. So uh, the red flag has been issued. They're going to stop you. I think it's going to be a while. Might off the driver's cold drink. Yeah, they said you could probably go ahead and get out. It's going to be a little bit. You really said I could get out? Ask you. You can't get out of the car. They just said you could get out. Don't be messing with nothing. Just get out. It's flagged. We have to stop working on it. We have to stop working on the car. Junior looking at the uh, crack in the track. Sounds like a Dr. Seuss book. I'm leading the race. You got this adrenaline going, and you're running good, real happy with the way things are going. And the track came apart. What happened with you out there? I guess I locked the rib race up or wheel hop or something. I just went in and just lost it. And showed no signs of that all day, you know? Well, we're under red flag right now. I know when I got out of the car, that's pretty bad. And then during the red flag, you can't work on your car. So we were pretty much just stuck. Come on with Dale Earnhardt Jr. He's just been out there and taken a look at that hole on the racetrack. What's she? That's hope. <laughs> you just took a few minutes to calm down and just think, you know, like, what in the hell just happened? Just went from a top 10 car to couldn't drive it to the next thing you know, you're wheel hopping and wrecking in the fence. Now I'm sitting in the garage wreck. It's pretty much all you can do. Just wait till they can get it back together and go from there. Uh, just trying to make all the right moves and be patient, you know, because you can tear the body up so easy here without trying. It's unreal. Good luck today, Rusty. 
Back upstairs to Mike. Hey, that wasn't nothing but a hell yeah. <laughs> I thought, he goes, one back, and you know it now. <laughs> I'm like, yeah! <laughs> track coming up. It's a hurdle. It's an obstacle in the way of finishing the race that you don't need and you don't want. It's kind of nervous time. Yeah, it was close. I was going to come over and tell him he had his shirt off that since the Janet Hill, you can't be uh, walking around with no top on. Sterling is just someone that I can joke around with, not just because he's my teammate. He is just a, a really good hearted, um, you know, nice guy to be around. Sterling's always playing jokes on me, so he'll get me back, I'm sure, one day, probably with a firecracker. The engines have been refired down on the back straightaway, DW. I'm ready to go, baby. I'm ready to, man. It's lock and load. As soon as they took the red flag up, it was metal flying, taping, and uh, welding, and grinding, and cutting, and uh, duct taping, just everything you can think of to get that car back together, and them guys were all over it. Here comes your leader again, Dale Earnhardt Jr. in that butter monster car. Whoa, Jr. got up on the curve off the floor that time. That's going to hurt him a little bit. Jimmy Johnson in the 48. We've seen his car so good on the high side. He just drives past Dale Earnhardt Jr. He'll take the lead here. We got a lot there. Let's see what you got. You always uh, try to, after a wreck, get the car back out as soon as you can to gain as many positions or points, if there's any to gain, and uh, to finish the race, not to become a quitter. Hang on. They're probably going to make you start the back. Keep going there, and then here he comes. All right, there you go. The car looks a lot better. It's still feeling pretty good. Everything's cool, Kenny. I'm telling you, there was something wrong earlier. This thing like it was yesterday or no. Jamie McMurray trying to run down Dale Earnhardt Jr. He misses a battle for third, fourth, and fifth right here. Still there. Outside. Outside. Whoa. Jamie McMurray on the 42 car got a little damage that time. I didn't teach him that, I swear to God. Dale Earnhardt Jr. got on the radio a couple of moments ago and indicated that he expects this race to get very physical. He asked that his spotter communicate to Jamie McMurray, it's okay to beat on my back bumper, knock it off if you have to, just don't spin me out. It ain't no problem, don't act like I'm worried about anything tonight. Just, you know, I just don't want to have to go to the back. Rusty was the quickest car on the racetrack, catching McMurray. The 42 car has started to go to the loose side. I like that gas, I'm just killing the tires. Rusty Wallace just had a look inside Jamie McMurray. Jamie squeezes Rusty down. Rusty makes his own room. It just seemed like anything that we did was making it worse. It wasn't making it better. To not be able to turn and then not be able to get on the gas coming off the corner. And that's the two worst problems you can have racing. And Rusty Wallace is right behind Dale Jr. now in the two car. Here he comes. Outside, outside. All clear. Right now, I really believe Rusty Wallace is in the catbird seat. He'll be coming to the front. Wallace goes head hunting the leader, who is still Jimmy Johnson. I tell you, oh, if Rusty may win the drag oh, race this time. He's got him this time. Rusty likes the bottom down here. All Jimmy can do is fight. Now, and Rusty clears him for the lead. Right now, Rusty is opening up a nice lead. It'd be pretty hard to catch him if something doesn't give here pretty quick. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and eight car got loose off turn two. He was almost under Ryan Newman the last time through. And it'll be the white flag for Rusty Wallace this time. First time he's seen it in 105 races. Now these fans are standing. Now all of them are waving to Rusty Wallace as he goes down the backstretch. Here they come to the flag. Rusty Wallace wins the Advance Auto Parts right. 500 for his 55th career victory. Bobby Labonte second. Bernard Jr. third. Good job today, man. That'll be a pretty good day for you in the point. Yeah.
I'm supposed to be in. Yeah, lost some spots. I knew that was the win. No, I finished third. So we took the lead in the points by five. And uh, that's awesome, you know, just to be in a points lead this, this far into the season. It really solidifies all, all of our statements about our ability to win a championship. Could have been a lot worse. I'm pretty disappointed with where we finished. And I think that's good to be disappointed with a top 10 finish because I wasn't able to tell my crew what to do to make my car better. Ripped your heart out that you want something that bad and it wasn't gonna happen. And I knew all I had to do was just make it from the car to my motorhome and just not cry. And that's a bad way to put it, but I'm not saying anything that people in other sports, whether it's racing or basketball or boxing, everybody out there knows the feeling you get and it's not a good feeling, but you gotta go on. As a wife, you kind of struggle for words to say to him because I know he's gonna be frustrated. And I'm going to look in his eyes again and see heartbroken and discouraged. And, and that's tough because I can't fix it. That's one thing in our lives I can't fix. They run, they run the jet dryers around the track. And it blows right into your damn car, you know. And so it feels the car carbon monoxide, pure carbon monoxide, like standing in the back of a jet airplane. You're like, <gasps> Yeah. That's the way it goes. Did you watch the last last part of it? Yes, I did. Or did you keep watching? Intently. Like Lee boy. No, no, I watched you. Did you? Yeah. Well, you did good, Junior. Yeah, thank you. You know, you're sitting there, first in points. Yeah, that's right, first that's in awesome. points. Sorry. Right. No, that's all right. I got it. In your phone. It's nice to meet you. Yeah, it's nice to meet you, Courtney. I'll probably see you. Next race? <laughs> I think it's awesome for us to get in the win at Martinsville. And I'm not surprised because we've raced each other a time or two pretty hard on the racetrack. And he's taught me some pretty hard lessons. He runs a parallel with my father in the sport. And he means a lot to me of what the sport is to me. He's a big piece of that. Hey, good job. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate it. Son of a bitch. It's about time I won something, huh? I was like, man. Oh, I didn't think, right think there's any way I'd get around you, man. Uh, and we started off. It's not going, damn. You know? Push it like this. Like, hey, Thanks, buddy. Hey, good job. Appreciate it, sir. Thanks for coming by, man. You got it. That's the stuff, legends. He's never going to be gone, you know? just like my dad.